Good morning, everyone. Wanderer here. Welcome back to Wildlanders. So it is a pretty miserable morning out. Quite rainy, but you know, the world's not going to explore itself, right? So uh, I thought we'd do a bit more exploration today. Now that we've got the basics kind of covered, I think we can have a look around here. Riverwood is over this way. Maybe we'll head down that way and see what we can find along the way. Loot some stuff and hopefully get some more herbs and maybe kill a few more wolves and stuff. Maybe a few bandits, we'll see. I'm not optimistic about my chances against uh, human enemies just yet. I've killed a few, but they're pretty tough game in general is pretty tough with this mod until we get some more levels under our belt. But that's okay. I'm fine with having the struggle. That's part of the fun for me. Hmm, some kind of ruins over here. Much as I like this rain, it does uh, kind of make things hard to see. Oh, so there's a uh, Spriggan in here. Spriggan. Okay, we're just going to loot this stuff real quick and then get the hell out of here, I guess. Because I'm not confident in taking on... Oh, okay, he's right there. Look, I didn't want anything, sir. I just wanted to inspect the local corpses at your feet. You have a nice day now. Yep, I'll just be on my way. Where are we at again? Yeah, this is fine. Look at that stamina region. I can even sprint, and we don't lose stamina too quickly because I am very well fed and we also have the uh, the mountain flower buff going or whatever to regen stamina. So we have, I think, like two stamina regen per second from those. That'll be very useful in combat too. I have to remember to keep myself bathed with that stuff. Hello, Mr. Fox. Oh, uh, hi, Mr. Skeleton. Bye, Mr. Skeleton. Went for a fox and found a skeleton. A couple skeletons. I hear a wolf over here, too. I think that wolf is going nuts killing a deer or something. You know what? Maybe we'll just let him kill the deer and then we can get the loot off of both of them. That'd be great. I'm just going to sit here for a second and regen my stamina because it sounds like there's a pack of them over there. All right, we should be good now. I always love the storms and the rain in general in Skyrim, but it is kind of bad for our health for a character to be out in it all the time. There is uh, something. I think it's a deer. Ow. This guy's kind of hurt. One's quite a bit bigger than the other one, though. Okay, the small one is pretty easy to take out. Big one is a lot more difficult. A bit scarier. Definitely should cast my heal spell here. Get that going. And my orc axe is not bound correctly. Put that on one. There we go. Go ahead and harvest this guy. These are small enough that I could pick them up, the, the entire carcass, and harvest it later if I wanted to. So keep that in mind. Um, I won't be doing that because there's no real point, but normally you could do that. You do not want to fight? Are you like, are you all busted up from fighting this guy? I think you are. Hey man, free stuff for me. Oh, hello. Yeah, alright, that works. Is that a wolf out there or a deer? What is out there? I don't even know. You know what? We're not going to go out there. Well, does it really matter? I mean, we're already drenched, right? We're already really, really wet. I don't know how cold that water is, though. Maybe we shouldn't go in there. Ooh, iron ore. 
I think the conversion of ore to... I have to check this again, but I'm pretty sure the conversion of ore to bars is quite atrocious, though. And, um, it's not great. I think that should be maybe... Maybe it should be modified? I don't know. It seems like this is less worth doing than just killing enemies and looting them and breaking down their stuff. Although, you can get gems from mining, which is a big boon. Gems are used for alchemy and some other stuff, too. They're pretty important. So I guess uh, keep that in mind as well. Um, hello, Mr. Horse. Oh, and a guy. Several guys. Hello there. The Legion's always looking for strong, capable warriors. I think you've got what it takes. Oh, yeah? How about you guys just conveniently die, you know, accidentally, and I take your horse? How about that? If I see a horse by itself, like, it, I'm totally stealing it. Because this, this walking stuff is, uh, yeah, it's no fun. Walking with my own two legs of my own, my own power, that's way too difficult. Big tower over here, too. This is part of the beauty of Skyrim, especially for me, because I haven't played it for so long. I don't remember any of these random locations at all. I don't know what's there. Could be nothing. Could be a giant treasure trove. Who knows? Oh, it's, it's just like a watchtower for Falkreath? It looks abandoned, though, and that doesn't look good. Um... Whoa! Whoa! So magic is pretty strong then, huh? Yeah, I'd say magic is pretty strong. Watch this. Let me show you how it's done. Where the hell are you? Okay. Look, I, I almost had her. I almost had her. One more try. Alright, we're gonna use the sprint directly at them. That's it. That's right. Oh, hello. Um, what are you? Wait, I didn't kill you. <laughs> what happened? What happened to you? I didn't- I didn't kill you. I didn't swing at you. Okay. I mean, all right. Evil magic wizard, a necromancer. I mean, necromancy, I don't have anything against a necromancer. I wouldn't have killed you purely for being a necromancer. I would have killed you for your loot, most likely, but not just for being a necromancer. An ancient text. What is the ancient text? I can analyze the text? On glancing at the text, the characters appear to be rune-like, but are not completely straight. The shapes, curves at the edges, and each character appears to be written in a single stroke. Okay. Try to, try to translate? Text is incredibly old, and all but a few pages are legible. You can attempt to translate the text, but the remaining pages are so brittle that they may not be legible afterwards. Experience with enchanting delicate objects may give you steady enough hands to, prop, to preserve the text. Okay, so don't use this until I have better enchanting skills, what I'm getting from that. The Book of Daedra and Liminal Bridges. Liminal Bridges, a discourse on the theory and praxis of traveling between uh, Mundus and Oblivion. Mundus being the mundane realm, where we are now. And the Book of Daedra. So, considering that this was a necromancer slash conjurer, and there are two books here, one which is talking about uh, Daedra, and one which is talking about how to traverse between Oblivion and the Mundane Realm, I think we can assume that this person was trying to summon Daedra. Trying to learn how to summon Daedra. That's, uh, that's not good really isn't. I'd say we've done the world of service, boys. And, you know, we got it on first try, too. 
because I'm such an epic gamer. We got that first try. Definitely didn't die three times trying to do it. Nope. Nope, because Wandy is a god gamer and this is a permadeath run. If you can't tell that sarcasm, it, it definitely is. I will do permadeath on this eventually, probably, because I'm really enjoying it and I think permadeath would make it a lot of fun, but for now, I don't know the map of Skyrim very well. I don't know this mod pack that well yet, so we're not going to do that. Okay, good note to self. There's a... Uh a very scary necromancer over here. Where are we? I'm going the opposite way of where I want to go. I want to go more northward. Hello, fellow travelers. Are you Imperials? Looks like it. Alright. I will. I'm going to run like a little girl and hide behind your shiny metal armor if anything tries to attack me because I'm not very strong yet. And hopefully you die to it, and then I can finish it off, whatever it is, and then everybody's happy, right? Okay, I kind of want to go to the east a bit from here then. Was there a road I could take to the east? Still hearing wolves about over here. Not sure how I feel about third person in this. For horse riding, it's the way to go for sure. Just stop running away from me. I want to kill you and take your pelt. It's a deer. Uh, I can't get him. My character's too slow. I need a horse so I can chase down all these deer and stuff. Well, that's a horse and there's there's nobody around. I'm hidden. Guess what? That's my horse now, boys. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Oh god. A, oh dear god. A Strigern. They're never going to kill this thing. Oh no. Look, hey, good luck, guys. I think this was their horse. <laughs> good luck. Oh. Wait. Wait, so did I have a bounty for a second there? Did I hit the wrong thing? Or did they see, did they see me steal a horse? Oh, a bear's killing him. No, no, kill kill the Spriggan bear. No, no, no. Not me. No! No, I didn't mean to put that away. Fight the Spriggan. Or fight each other. So I can go loot these people. Did I have a bounty of 7,000 on my head? For stealing the horse, or did I did I hit somebody else in an accident? I didn't mean to hit somebody else, I meant to hit the Spriggan. But I might have... Oh no, he's... Okay, it's just a wolf. The wolf is fine. Look, we're getting out of here, horsey. This is a bad idea. What is this game? Grand Theft Equine? Oh god, we're gonna get these people killed. Hey, listen, I don't want to alarm you, but there is a very nasty Spriggan up there who regens their health nearly instant. Look, you know... Hey, if you want to go that way, it's, it's on you, okay? I warned you guys. wonder if I could lure it over to these guys. Am I going the right way here? No, I want to go back to the east. 
I'd very much like to... Okay, here... Okay, okay, here it is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, hey, guys. Uh, there's a nasty thing here. You might want to run away, because it's... Oh, wait. Oh. Um... There is no way in hell we can kill this. I'm pretty sure I need fire to kill that. So we're just going to run away and we're going to loot everything over here. I'm pretty sure all the witnesses are dead. That was the, what the message said. The witnesses are dead, so therefore I don't have to worry about uh, this stuff. No, I didn't mean to get back on. I want... Look. Of course. Work with me here. I want to loot this stuff. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna ride this guy a bit more, so you can adopt a horse. You can make a horse your own that you find in the wild. Uh-oh. That works. Did I just run him over? I think I did. Yeah, horses are kind of awesome, guys. Okay, I'm gonna run this horse for a bit over- oh, hello. Just wolves everywhere over here. Yeah, not so tough now, are ya? Yeah, just get trampled. Oh, where are you going? Hold still. There we go. Okay, look. I'm going to ride my my new horse for a bit here until the steel message goes away up here which it should if I take it far away enough from where it was and then we get off of it and we crouch yes no not not that I want to get off I want to crouch I'm pretty sure that should do the thing but it's not let me ride a bit further, see if it works. There we go, finally, I, I took him far enough. Okay, so we can go over here and do adopt. And now I can exit this. And this is now my horse, very nice. What should we name our stolen horse? Hmm. I'm going to name him Dance in in uh, honor of Paladin Dance from Fallout 4. Okay, now we can just get on him. Very good. Now we have a permanent horse. Let's get that saved and locked in. The horse can die, though. Just keep that in mind. The horse can die. So we got to be careful with him. we got a horse now. That's going to be a huge difference. Make the game a lot easier. They have a lot of carry weight, too. So now the game becomes much more easy. We can hunt down game. Get him. Get him. You can get him. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. No worries, sir. I'll ride the wolf down for you. Maybe not. He got stuck. He's dead. We got him. Well done. My horse is waiting. Okay, so... That's good. We know that he's gonna stay for us now. Okay, now I have, like, 50 wolf corpses to... go and loot along the way back through here that we killed on our way, trying to... trying to ride our horse enough to make it our own. And there's also a very mean Spriggern over there that I definitely won't be able to kill. Now imagine during that little, you know, the hunting and harvesting sequence there, the, you know, the field dressing and all that stuff. Imagine if time passed for each. I mean, that would be cool and immersive, but the problem is it, it takes time like, it takes time in-game, like, 
it takes real life time for that to happen. Like, you have to sit here and wait for, like, a load screen every time you do one of these actions, and that's why I don't bother with that. I turn it off because it just isn't very fun. It I'm sitting there waiting for things forever. And that's, that's a big no for me. I'm sure it's a big no for most of you, too. Immersive, maybe, but fun, definitely not. There's a camp over here, too. should check it out as well. Oh, hello, my, uh, mud crab. Wow. Smacked him good. Gotcha. And back we go. Difference between taking like 30 to 40 seconds to just a couple of easy e spams. Much better, in my opinion. Wandy is a master hunter. Hello, Mr. Wolf. I don't know what you're looking at, but you're about to die. Meet death. Hey, level 22 handed. I bet I can put another perk into that now. Let's see. Spy Honda. Um... Yeah, we can do that. And we can do this. Yeah, it requires level 20. Okay, next perk will go into Barbaric Might. That's cool. Off we go. Alright, let's hope that this Spriggan has gone away. And we can loot all the corpses that he killed for us over here. Those nice Imperials that so valiantly fought against him, but sadly demised. Uh, let me use my survival vision. Oh, I can't do it on horseback? Rest in peace. There's a plant over here. So plants are like the white color. I kind of wish that lasted longer. This is very handy, though. I assumed those guys would be around here somewhere. Unless I've gone past where they were fighting, or they just ran away, I don't know. Could be either one. Should get my healing going here again, too. There we go. Maybe they were victorious, I don't know. Stranger things have happened. Oh, here they are. Yes, they fought valiantly. Kijar and uh, uh, Kind Tove. Rest in peace, Kind Tove. Your unfortunate demise is uh, my prophet, though, so... Some of you may die, but that's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Let's go get our horse again. I don't mind the third person, it's not too bad, but I don't know if I'd want to do it for combat full-time. Okay, well that has all gone pretty well. I guess we can explore some more around here now. I can see a lot better, or I can, well yeah, I can see what I'm doing a lot better because being mad in the horse means we can kind of see above the vegetation better, if that makes sense. So I can see game further away, I can see enemies further away. Speaking of, hello, Mr. Wolf. Bye, Mr. Wolf. I hear a deer over there, too, I think. I think it's a deer. Could you stop sliding down the mountain? Thank you. There he is. I see him. 
bear? Did I just knock the bear down? I did. Okay, that's kind of overpowered. I don't think a horse should be able to knock down the bear. I think if a horse ran into a bear, the bear would just, like, smack him. But, hey, that was a really easy bear kill. No complaints there. Belt, harvest, butcher, expose, good. Horse time. Would it kill you to be sunny, Skyrim? Ah, oh, here we go. Bam! He wrecked, dude. <laughs> he just sent his ass flying. I'm pretty sure I do more damage while mounted as well. Because of damage multiplier. Although you swing a lot slower, so I guess it makes kind of sense. Probably the same DPS. Same damage per second, but a lot slower swinging means that your one hit does a lot of damage, which is advantageous when you're on a horse because you can do hit and run type tactics. Hey, another iron ore vein. Sure, I'll take that. This is really fun. I'm really enjoying the whole just roaming the land and hunting animals and harvesting what I see, taking opportunity wherever I can find it, you know? What do we have here? Probably should save. I haven't saved in ages. Do I have, like... Oh, there's a wolf over here and a deer. Yeah, I have heals and stuff going. I wanted to make sure I had the heal going still, the heal buff going. Cracked Tusk Keep, eh? Uh, no, please. No. Not really. But. Okay, bad, bad, bad. Let's lure them out. I think I just got knocked off my horse. Oh god. Oh boy. Horsey. Horsey. Stop, horsey. Oh my god, stuck on a tree. It's not gonna stop me from killing the deer on the way here, though. I think we're already out of their range. They're not gonna follow too far because we're on a horse and we can outrun them pretty easily. Okay, that could have gone better. Let's do that and um, restore stamina too, yeah. We do a fortify armor. No, we're still in combat, I think, actually. Fortify stamina, fortify stam regen. Sure you have, but were they mounted? Did they use the infamous circle around you and confuse the AI tactic? I don't think they did. Dang it. You can switch sides. Dang it. Okay, one down. Need stamina. Please don't die. Pal Paladin dance the horse. Can I just knock him down? Probably would make things easier, huh? I missed him. There we go. No, other side. Got him. Got him, boys. We got him. This makes... This makes fighting these guys so much easier. Oh, my God. Okie dokie. Thank you for your contribution. Ooh, dwarven stuff. And orcish, eh? 
Orcish armor is pretty, like, it's pretty good. It's, like, fairly high level. I'm going to just wait here for a second because your horse does regenerate health over time. And if I just wait there... I couldn't tell if that was somebody yelling at me over there or if I just was hearing things. But yeah, we should regenerate our horse health to full there. If we just wait for a second. Wait for like an hour. No dead guy here. Anybody else left here? I have fought worse than you. I cannot best you. Well, get wrecked then, fool. Rest in peace, Ugash Gro Kromgog. Those are some serious orc RP names, man. And Azuk Grobagla. I don't know why it gives me so much joy to pronounce their names. I just think it's funny. It's a nice place you guys got here. Look at that. Bear pelt, some meats and stuff, some rabbits. Look at all that. We can fill up our bottles with meat if we want. Malakath code. Someone suggested that I read these um, books at the end of the episode. I might do that. I'm also going to stop picking up, like, iron tankards and stuff because they just don't give that much and uh, it's not worth the time. Ooh. Dwarven chest piece. Light armor forging. Oh. Yes, please. And we got a level up from that, too. The Almanac of or Orcish Blacksmithing. This does not give us skill, but it's pretty cool. We're getting all kinds of nice stuff over here. Thank you very much. I kind of want to do uh, heavy armor now because it just looks so cool, you know? But I know that heavy armor is really, it's really bad. It makes you run really slow. I don't know. I don't think it's the way to go, at least not early on, whenever you don't have the skills for it. Maybe later it's better. I'm gonna fill up my water here too, yeah? That is this button? No, that's... Ah, oh crap. That's that's the bathe button. Well, we were bloody, I guess, so sure. Wash off your face and arms and stuff. That's fine. Yes, yes. We're nice and clean now. Good job. Good job, Wandy the Orc. You're clean now. Wait, I wanted to get water. There we go. Learning the keybinds. There's a fire here. Okay, so that went pretty well. That went pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that, you know, combat scenario we just had. Anything up here? We gotta go inside now, though, and maybe fight people inside here, which might be a lot more challenging. So, I guess maybe we go in the bottom way over here. Hope for the best. I've had some comments about the lock picking being so ridiculously difficult, and I, I agree with you guys. Um, I and I just don't think it's really there's no point to it, right? Because I'm so easily able to make lock picks. So what what's the point? I'd like to install a mod that just makes it so that like one lock pick opens one door, period, and then you're like done pretty much. I think we'll go with health again here for our level up. And uh, maybe we yeah, we're gonna go with barbaric might. 50% less power attack stamina cost and armor penetration. That sounds really good. Ooh, we got an or an alchemy lab over here. Not enchanting, but an alchemy lab. This is an abandoned old keep that some bandits are camping out in, I suppose. Wizards. Now that's power. Bet they got that secret magic. Can turn wood to gold. Yeah. Wish I could turn wood to gold. Do you now? 
Ah, uh, I stopped moving forward. Didn't mean to stop walking forward. Dang it, you stopped. It went surprisingly well. I'm surprised that went so well. Maybe we're getting good at this stuff, you know? I'll look at what we looted later. Wow, look at this place. All kinds of good stuff, and I will take your carrots. Carrots plus bear meat equals bear stew, which equals yum yum. Lots of stamina regen for a long time. Bunch of bed rolls here. Ooh, they're Legend of Red Eagle. That gives you a quest marker, right? Investigate further. Maybe I'll read this one at the end. Find Red Eagle's sword. Yeah, I remember that one. And then you get there, and it's like the most the most awful sword ever. Isn't there like a red a red guard guy in White Run who wants you to find that for him? But I'm an orc too. Oh shit. <laughs> well, a bad time to get lost, friend. Nothing to see here. Time to end this little game. It is time to end this game. Shouldn't have brought a bow to an axe fight. What was that? It's nothing. Shit. Shit! I don't know how I blocked that. I hit, like, control on accident and somehow it worked. Maybe that's, um... a better... I don't know. You know what? I have... I have... I keep forgetting. Um, I have... Berserker Rage. I never use it. How do I... What's the power... Okay, hold on. What's the power button? Z. No one huh. What about an orc with blood rage going, huh? Ooh, nice. Nice digs you got here, my man. I think I think I'll take it. I think I'll just make it my own. Uh, the coat of Malakath. That's the orc god, right? The sellsword guide to the orc strongholds. Oh, does this tell you like where they are? I have to read that too. That is a that berserk is a once per day thing. Ooh, a staff of fear. Targets level 15 and up won't fight for five seconds as they believe that they are hunted by overwhelming hordes of their worst nightmares. Hmm, okay. They cannot do anything but run for the duration. It's only five seconds, though, but that's worth a lot. Holy cow, it's worth a lot. Well, look at this place and all this stuff to read, too. Overview of gods and worship. Okay, lots of good stuff to read here so we can get a bit more lore on Skyrim. Because, again, I'm pretty rusty on my lore. Alright, I might do the, like, full looting of this place off-screen so you guys aren't subject to me doing that. Or maybe I'll, I'll read while I'm doing the looting. 
A Brief History of the Empire, Part 1, by Stronark Kothoji, Kothoj? the third Imperial Historian. Before the rule of Tiber Septim, all Tamriel was in chaos. The poet Trachizia called that period of continuous unrest days and nights of blood and venom. The kings were a petty lot of grasping tyrants who fought Tiber's attempts to bring order to the land, but they were as disorganized as they were dissolute, and the strong hand of Septim brought peace forcibly to Tamriel. The year was 2E896, so 896 of the Second Era. The following year, the Emperor declared the beginning of a new era, thus began the Third Era, year aught. For 38 years, the Emperor Tiber reigned supreme. It was a lawful, pious, and glorious age when justice was known to one and all, from serf to sovereign. On Tiber's death, it reigned for an entire fortnight as if the land of Tamriel itself was weeping. The Emperor's grandson, Pelagius, came to the throne. Though his reign was short, he was as strong and resolute as his father had been, and Tamriel could have enjoyed a continu continuation of the Golden Age. Alas, an unknown enemy of the Septim family hired that accursed organization of cutthroats, the Dark Brotherhood, to kill the Emperor Pelagius. As he knelt at prayer at the Temple of the One in the Imperial City. Pelagius I's reign lasted less than three years. Pelagius had no living children, so the crown imperial passed to his first cousin, the daughter of Tiber's brother, Agnorith. Kintira, former queen of Sylvanar, assumed the throne as Kintira I. Her reign was blessed with prosperity and good harvests, and she herself was an avid patroness of the art, music, and dance. Kintira's son was crowned after her death, the first emperor of Tamriel to use the imperial name Uriel. Uriel I was the great lawmaker of the Septim dynasty and a promoter of independent organizations and guilds. Under his kind but firm hand, the Fighters Guild and the Mages Guild increased in prominence throughout Tamriel. His son and successor, Uriel II, reigned for 18 years from the death of Uriel I in the Third Era, 64. To Pelagius II's ascension in Third Era, 82. Tragically, the rule of Uriel II was cursed with blights, plagues, and insurrections. The tenderness he inherited from his father did not serve Tamriel well, and little justice was done. Pelagius II inherited not only the throne from his father, but the debt from the latter's poor financial and judicial management. Pelagius dismissed all of the Elder Council and allowed only those willing to pay great sums to resume their seats. He encouraged similar acts among his vassals, the kings of Tamriel, and by the end of his 17-year reign, Tamriel had returned to prosperity. His critics, however, have suggested that any advisor possessed of wisdom but not of gold had been summarily ousted by Pelagius. This may have led to some of the troubles his son, Antiochus, faced when he in turn became emperor. Antiochus was certainly one of the more flamboyant members of the usually austere Septim family. He had numerous mistresses and nearly as many wives and was renowned for the grandeur of his dress and his high good humor. Unfortunately, his reign was rife with civil war, surpassing even that of his grandfather, Uriel II. The War of the Isle in 110 Third Era, 12 years after Antiochus assumed the throne, nearly took the province of Somerset Isle away from Tamriel. The United Alliance of the Kings of Somerset and Antiochus only managed to defeat the King Augum of the island kingdom of Pyandonia due to a freak storm. Legend credits the Sigic Order of the Isle of Artium with the sorcery behind the Tempest. The story of Kintara II, heiress to her father Antiochus's throne, is certainly one of the saddest tales in imperial history. Her first cousin Uriel, son of the queen Potama of Solitude, accused Kintira of being a bastard, alluding to the infamous decadence of the imperial city during her father's reign. When this accusation failed to stop her coronation, Uriel brought the support, bought the support, of several disgruntled kings of High Rock, 
Skyrim, and Morrowind, and with Queen Putama's assistance, he coordinated three attacks on the Septim Empire. The first attack occurred in the Iliac Bay region, which separates High Rock and Hammerfell. Kintira's entourage was massacred and the Empress taken captive. For two years, Kintira II languished in an imperial prison believed to be somewhere in Glenpoint or Glamoral before she was slain in her cell under mysterious circumstances. The second attack was on a series of imperial garrisons along the coastal Morrowind Islands. The Imperian Empress's consort, Contin Erinx, fell defending the forts. The third and final attack was a siege of the Imperial City itself occurring after the Elder Council had split up the army to attack uh, Western High Rock and Eastern Morrowind. The weakened government had little defense against Uriel's determined aggression and capitulated after only a fortnight of resistance. Uriel took the throne that same evening and proclaimed himself Uriel III, Emperor of Tamriel. The year was 121, Third Era. Thus began the War of the Red Diamond described in Volume 2 of this series. Alright guys, well, I think in this one episode we have managed to find ourselves a pretty decent home in this cracked, cust cracked tusk keep. Um, I can put down a campfire out here and put down a cooking pot. We have an alchemy bench. We have an enchanting thing we can use out here too if we need to. The mobile enchanting bench or whatever. And then we've also got a forge here, which... A forge is pretty important. We can't make a forge uh, anywhere that I'm aware of. You can't just like sit down a forge as, as far as I'm... As far as I know. So... I want to check something. Can I make iron ingots over here if I use this forge and show let's, let's say if I, if I show smithing stuff here but yeah I'm not sure I can forge ingots here which is a problem so if I want to make ingots I'll have to go to a kiln or whatever it's called the charcoal charcoal thing this is nice though I can I can do most of the crafting stuff here this can be like my Little base over here. Pretty happy with this. And it's finally not raining. Gosh, thank goodness. The whole episode it was raining. Alright. Well, I'm going to probably break some stuff down over here. And uh, sort my inventory off screen. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.